Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Scepter OS. It's based on Stable Debian and comes in the KDE desktop environment. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member right here on eBuzz Central, buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. First thing we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to Scepter's website, which is scepter.sourceforge.io, and it's a pretty straightforward and plain website. It just says Scepter, Debian, KDE Plasma, and Tor Technologies. It does come with the Tor browser. We are looking at Scepter 2021.5, which was released in November, so it's their most recent release. And it just states it's an operating system that provides users with a perfect computing environment for surfing the internet anonymously. Provides users with a stable, reliable distribution based on Debian with the KDE Plasma desktop. And then you've got Linux kernel 5.10, Plasma 5.20.5, software management is Synaptic and Debitool. Internet, you're going to have Tor Browser, Thunderbird, and base utilities. Then it's got some screenshots. Then you can look at the release notes. And then if you go back up top, you've got About. You've got screenshots, you've got download, and you've got wiki. With it being based on stable Debian, should you have any problems, you shouldn't have any issue going over to the Debian forums and getting your questions answered. That is their website. And as you can see over here, we've got the Onion Network. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Then I'm going to reopen it so you can see the Tor browser and what you're going to expect when you first open the application up. It's going to ask you, connect to Tor. If you always want to connect, you just click here and go ahead and say connect, and then it'll start connecting. If you're not familiar with Tor, basically it relays you through three or four different pass-through points so that your IP address cannot be traced and you can surf the internet anonymously. And it opens up with DuckDuckGo as your base search engine, and then privacy as a human right, and then you can make donations to the Tor project. So I'm going to go ahead, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then if you download Scepter OS, put it on a USB, open it up in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're going to be met with. It's a very beautiful background. I'm going to go ahead and right-click and go ahead and configure desktop, and let's look at some other backgrounds. Let's zip this over, and as you can see, with it being based on Debian, you're going to have some other Debian-focused wallpapers. And you've got a few to choose from, and most of them are Debian. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the wallpaper that it came with out of the box up. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. If you come down to the bottom, you have one panel. Over on the right side of the panel, you've got date and time. Should you want to adjust that, just right click, go up to adjust date and time. When it opens, you can come over here. You can set your time zone wherever you want. I'm going to pick something like Dallas. That's not listed, so let's try Chicago. There's Chicago. Let's go ahead and pick it. Apply. And then go back over to date and time and go over here and set date and time automatically. Go ahead and make sure that's highlighted. Click apply and your time should change to the right time. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Right next to it, you've got your hidden applications, which is your notifications, K Organizer, and KDE Connect. If you're not familiar with KDE Connect, if you own an Apple or Android phone, zip on over to your respective store, download the KDE Connect app on your phone, then you can sync it to either your PC or your desktop. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Sound, internet, keyboard layout, most recent device, battery remaining, and then of course your weather widget. And then right next to it is your four desktops. You can switch through those just by clicking, or you can scroll through them with the scroll wheel on your mouse. Now, should you want to make adjustments to this panel, just right click on the panel, click on edit panel, and it gives you a lot of options here. To the right, you've got more options. You can align the panel to the left, center, or the right. And then, of course, visibility. You can make it always visible, auto-hide. Windows can cover it or Windows can go below it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then if you move over to the left, you can change the panel height. If you want to make the panel a little bigger, you can. And then you can adjust screen edge. We're not going to mess with that. And then, of course, if you want to add widgets either to your desktop or your panel, you just click on Add Widgets. And those will populate over to the left. And you can scroll through these widgets and pick the ones you like, put them either on your panel or on your desktop. Now, if you look through here and don't see the widget that you want, just go up here and click on Get New Widgets, and then you can download new Plasma widgets, and then over here it'll give you the most downloaded, newest, highest rated, advanced radio player, translator. So you can scroll through here and find literally thousands of different widgets that you can put on your system. So let's go ahead and close out of that. 
and close out of that. If you come over to the left, you'll notice that there's nothing pinned on the panel. Of course, you can go up here, and if you wanted to look up something like the Tor browser, right-click, pin it to Task Manager, you'd have it pinned, and then you could just come down here, click on it, and of course, it would open up. It's that simple. So let's close out of that. Now, if you wanted to change this menu, some people like this menu, some don't. All you have to do is come down here to the Scepter logo, right-click, Show Alternatives. You got the Application Launcher or the Application Menu. So let's go ahead and just click on the Application Menu and switch. And then when you open it up, you have an Application Menu that's a little easier to get around. You just go to Graphics and it tells you everything that you have. You go to Internet, Multimedia, Office, and it makes things a lot more simple. But that comes down to preference if you want something different or if you want to keep it the way it is out of the box. That's completely up to you. That's the freedom of Linux. So let's go ahead and open this up. You come up here, you've got the Tor browser we've already seen. System settings we'll take a look at in a second. And then, of course, your file manager. And those of you that are familiar with KDE or familiar with Dolphin, it's a very good-looking file manager. And it's lightweight, stays out of your way, and lets you get things done. Over here, you've got your usual suspects. As always, if there's items over here that are listed that you don't want, all you have to do is pick that item, right-click, hide selection, and it'll go away. You can do that for however many you want to hide. And then it gives you a little bit more room over here. If you want to make these bigger, just right-click in this area, go to icon size, let's bump that up to large, and then they're a little easier to see. I do like the icons that Scepter is using out of the box. They're different, they're fresh, I just like it. They're not colorful and round or square, they just give you a different look. So, that is pretty much Dolphin File Manager. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And if you want to, go ahead and open this up. Go up to Dolphin, right-click on it, pin it to Task Manager, and then you've got it down here on your bar. Then you've got Kate, which is your text editor. Then you have Console, which is your terminal. Let's go ahead and pin that as well. There it is pinned. Let's go ahead and open that up. And if you look right up here, what I'm going to do real quick is see if they have HTOP installed. They do not. Let's see if they have TOP. And they do. At present, I have 3 gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. We are using 1 gigabyte at rest. But you do have to take into account that we are running this in a virtual machine, so you're going to have some of the operating system running in the RAM. So when you do download it, if you decide to install it, once it's installed, you will probably be sitting somewhere between 600 and 800 megabytes of RAM being used at rest, which I would say is mid-weight. Definitely not the highest I've seen, but definitely not the lowest either. Now, let's go ahead and close out of that. And I want to go ahead and close window. And then I want to reopen that, and I want to see if they give us NeoFetch out of the box. And they do give us NeoFetch. It just basically states you're on kernel 5.10.0-9, which is the stable Debian kernel. Bash is 5.1.4. Plasma 5.20.5. That's an older version of Plasma, but it is stable. And then the theme is Scepter 2 Plasma, Icons, Olifold Plasma, Console Terminal, AMD Ryzen 5, and we're in VirtualBox. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Come back up. Go over to the left. You've got your system monitor. Let's go ahead and take a peek at that. System Monitor is a lot like your Task Manager that you have on Windows. It's got your process table and then, of course, your system load. Right here, I've got two CPUs issued to this machine. At present, we're using just under 10% of those. On the memory, like I said, we've got issued 3 gigabytes, and we're using just a hair under a gig. And then, of course, your network history. And then you can minimize this back down if you wanted to go to your process table. Then you could come over and see what processes you have running and then if there's some that are in there running that you don't need running, you can kill them, or you can adjust your startup programs to make sure that no programs are running at boot up that don't need to be. So let's close out of that. Then you've got your file manager as root. And then, of course, Synaptic Package Manager. Let's take a peek at it. Okay, it's opened up. Let's go ahead and close that out. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this. And over here, you've got categories. You can do anything from amateur radio all the way down to videos, video software, web servers, word processing. World Wide Web, then you've got Sections, Status, Origin, Custom Filters, Search Results, and Architecture. So I'm going to go back to Sections. Now, if there's just a specific program you want to look up, come over here to the Search button. Let's look up something like OBS Studio. And as you can see, this over here gets highlighted, and then there's OBS Studio. If you wanted to install it, just click the box next to it. Mark for installation. It will bring up a list of dependencies that are required to install it. You can mark all of those. Once they are marked, all you got to do is click Apply, and then you would have OBS Studio installed on your system. 
Now, another thing I want to go over, if there's more than one program you want to install, let's go over here and let's look up Caden Live. There's Caden Live. You can go ahead and select it. Mark for installation. There's its dependencies. You go ahead and mark it. And now you have OBS Mark for installation and Caden Live. You can go through here, pick all the software that you want to install. Once you have it all selected, click apply, and it would install them all at once. And as you go, if you come down here to the lower left, it'll say two packages, 2098 installed, zero broken, 26 to install or upgrade, zero to remove, and 144 megabytes will be used. So to install OBS and Caden Live, you're going to be using about 144 megabytes. So that's how you install software onto the Scepter OS. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Come back down over here. You've got Thunderbird for your mail and VLC. Let's go ahead and take a look at system settings real quick. I'm going to go through these very quickly because I've covered these in previous videos, but I just want you to see that right now, You've got Breeze, Breeze Dark, or you got the Scepter. If you wanted to go to a dark mode, you could go ahead and switch it to Breeze and click Apply. And now you've got a dark mode up here. Makes things a little easier to see, especially if you're old like me and have to wear glasses. But you can change those. If there's nothing up here that you like, you can go down here to get new global theme. And what it'll do is it'll load these up, and you can show everything. Show most recent first, or you can go with highest rated, which is what I generally do because it brings the best rated ones up first, scroll through, find something you like, select it, install, and then you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then you can do that with plasma style, application style, colors, fonts. If you want to change your font, you just come over here to adjust all fonts, click on it. You can change your font type, font style, and font size. Just for an example, let's go ahead and bump the font size up to 12. I've selected 12, so let's go ahead and click OK and then apply. And as you can see, the font size changed across the operating system. So let's go ahead and go back. And then you can change and make adjustments and customize everything from workspace behavior, window management, startup and shutdown, notifications, users, accessibility. There are literally thousands of ways to customize KDE. So I'm not going to go in depth on that. And then of course, your system information that breaks down what we saw in NeoFetch, tells you what version of KDE and what kernel you're using. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you come back down to the applications. We'll kind of scroll through these. On graphics, you've got GIMP, LibreOffice Draw, Spectacle, which is your screenshot tool, Internet, HexChat, Thunderbird for your mail, Multimedia, you got Alyssa, Pulse Audio, Volume Control, VLC, Office, you have the LibreOffice suite out of the box, Science and Math, Settings, Synaptic Package Manager, System, KDE Partition Manager, KSIS Guard. You get a lot of tools out of the box. And then your Debbie tool, if you download a Deb package offline and you need to install it, you can do that with the Debbie tool. And then your utilities, ISO, Image Writer, Cleopatra, Knotes, Help, Power Session, Power Shutdown, Turn Off, everything you need there. That's just a quick look at Scepter OS. Tell me what you think. Is it something you might download, throw in a USB, put in a virtual machine, take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can become a member right here on eBuzz Central, buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next video.